Sometimes, in order to build something beautiful, you have to make a little bit of a mess. It's demo day. It's demo day, baby. Today is the point of no return. Don't ever do this. We're getting some big deliveries. We are waiting for our lumber delivery for the second story of our addition. And we're taking some necessary risks. A mistake with a chainsaw is usually a body part or a finger. Hopefully, it'll all be worth it in the end. No place I'd rather be than here with Grayson and his hand down my pants <laughs> holding me on the roof. <laughs> We're constantly getting comments of people asking like, I don't know how you do it or how do you guys keep the pace that you keep? And to be honest, there's one secret ingredient and that is sleep. If I don't get an amazing night's sleep, I cannot do half of the things that we do. I can't keep the grueling schedule that we keep. And I always get an amazing night's sleep on our Helix mattress. And Helix Sleep is the sponsor of today's video. Helix is a premium mattress in a box company that customizes each mattress to fit your unique needs and preferences with a short online quiz. It matches you with the perfect firmness for your body. All their mattresses are fiberglass free and they offer a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. Sleep is actually one of the best gifts that you can give. And we've actually figured this out because we gifted my grandma and my grandpa a Helix mattress. We gifted one to Allie's parents and everybody that we've actually given a Helix mattress to or has slept on one of our Helix mattresses because we had a Helix mattress in Terry. We have one in our house. Everybody that slept on one has said, wow, what kind of mattress is this? I slept amazing last night. So if you're tired of not getting the best night's sleep and you guys are ready to make a change, we highly recommend checking out Helix. And if you wanna do it right now, they're doing a huge deal for our viewers. If you guys click the link in our description or go to helixsleep.com slash Trent and Allie, you'll get 20% off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. So I wanted to say thanks again to Helix for sponsoring today's video. And we are gonna head outside get to work. <laughs> What's up guys and good morning. It is another day working on the build. Leo's very excited and so am I. Today's gonna be a big day. So we started sheathing this wall and this is an interior wall, but it's also a sheer wall. So it has to get this 7 16th uh, structural sheathing and it has to be nailed in a specific pattern to prevent the wall from shifting side to side or collapsing like a parallelogram. That's, that's what sheer is. So we're uh, getting our sheets cut out. We're getting them all nailed on here. We can't go all the way up because there's another wall that goes on top, but we can do one more sheet over here the two rows of sheets on this back wall and then our far wall over there, we can get uh, at least one row of sheets on. And then we gotta start playing surgeon. It is really one of those days that makes you just appreciate everything. We're having some stuff going on behind the scenes and um, I think everybody has stuff going on behind the scenes. No matter what it is in life, there's lots of things always happening with family or friends or yourself or anybody and um, today I'm just feeling so grateful for just how precious this world is and how precious this life is and that we get to share it with you and that we have you as part of our family and our extended family as well. I'll probably end up sharing more in the future, but for now, I just wanted to send you all a big hug because you never really know who needs it um, and who is dealing with what. We are out here doing a little bit more regrading 
our propane tank, our second tank is getting delivered tomorrow. And so Trent is out here getting the site fully prepped and ready for that second tank. This ain't where I belong Hey, look at me, man, what I become In preparation for two big deliveries tomorrow, Trent is trying to clear as much space as possible from all of the dirt that has accumulated behind the house, from backfilling and from regrading. He's trying to problem solve a little bit because there is so much dirt that needs to be removed uh, that it's kind of hard to figure out where to put it all. So right now he's just pulling everything from behind the addition onto either side toward the front of the property. And we'll kind of see if we can use that anywhere else to, to regrade some of the land. But over here, Brandon and Grayson have been doing so much sheathing. It looks amazing. It's looking pretty cool. So much work. So much dirt. By the time it snows, we have to be able to get the skid steer back here so that when the snow coming off this roof builds up back here, I can come back with the snow blower and blow it up there. I think it is going to work out really well. It's just hard right now to figure out, I don't even know how to climb up this, um, where to put everything. Ugh either permanently or temporarily. There's just so much. And with two big deliveries coming tomorrow, we need to have those spots clear for more lumber and for the propane tank. because originally I had no idea how this road was going to connect with the road over by the house, uh, but it looks like it's gonna connect perfectly to the road behind the top of the addition on the back side. So not from the patio, which is about 10 feet lower, um, but we could potentially snow blow this entire route all winter long and keep snow from the entire perimeter of the house and the addition. So basically Trent could go around the back side of the addition where the excavator is and snow plow this whole thing all the way to the front of the property, which would be huge and amazing. Uh, and it looks like if we can just figure out where to put a little bit more of this dirt, we will be able to do that and everything will be looking great for winter. So in preparation for tomorrow, we also need to move all the stuff that's been staged in front of our house, in front of the deck, um, kind of in a different spot so that there's a new spot for the lumber kit that's getting delivered tomorrow. So Grayson is in the middle of moving all these enormous beams and ledger boards. Not even breaking a sweat. Oh no, I'm, I'm sweating pretty good. <laughs> you are? <laughs> we need some expert advice. Me. <laughs> All right, so the part that's just like a foot of the roof needs to be cut off because this is actually going to be inside of the addition. So we need to remove the roofing panels and then cut a line down the roof to remove that section. The problem is this roof is installed very well and very permanently. This is where it gets a little tricky. You guys should just use a chainsaw and just groove the whole thing. Basically, there is no right way to do this, so we're just trying to figure out the least traumatic way to do this. Basically, we just have to slowly, one piece at a time, try and remove this whole eave, this whole soffit section, all of the bar drafters, the fascia, and this has rim board and structural fascia, which is like these giant LSL beams. Uh, this is not gonna be fun. And the first part that we've got to do 
is get the roofing off and it's like installed going in the opposite direction. So removing it is also a huge pain in the butt. Just don't ever do this. <laughs> out here looking for snacks. I should be. I'm trying to get our snippers ready and the chainsaw's uh, chain is a little bit loose so we need to tighten it and put some bar and chain oil in it. You guys just use a chainsaw and just groove the whole thing. Part of the roof needs to come off anyway, so we just like throw a wild card and let me do the chainsaw and see how it goes. I like your legs. <laughs> and the odds of you cutting your leg off with this is pretty, especially doing something like that, it's pretty high. <laughs> All right, that's valid. I'll take it. It probably won't pop out underneath. Oh. All right, so we got our uh, two panels off here. The rest of the roofing up here is actually going to stay, and we're going to have to do some retrofitting here to waterproof this through the winter or not. Maybe just some <laughs> ice and water shield. I don't know. We'll see what happens. See how far we get. But now we've got to somehow cut this eave off. Now, we're going to use a chainsaw to cut through like the rafters and stuff like that, but I'm going to try to see if we can use the skill saw to cut the sheathing on a nice line that we snap. And then uh, maybe we'll be able to pull these, the end fascia off in pieces. Hmm. I'm not really sure how this is gonna go, but we're gonna do what we can. It's demo day. It's demo day, baby. <laughs> Are you ready? All right, so Brandon's just gonna finish cutting off the soffit under here. It's also like a James Hardy product, so it's like concrete, so we gotta use this tile blade. Mm. And then, I think we're pretty close to just uh, starting to try and cut this thing off in oh. pieces, and hopefully it comes off easily. That is scary. Yeah, especially because we can't really see in there, so I don't really know, like, you gonna do it in sections? What kind of metal brackets are in there or anything? So we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and do it in like maybe a little three or four foot section so that the pieces that fall off are easy to handle. Cool. All right.
We're being super safe, Jennifer. <laughs> totally safe. Nothing to see here. It sounds like you're tearing the house down. That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> no place I'd rather be than here with Grayson and his hand down my pants holding me on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Good! Regardless of how this is coming across on camera, these guys have a plan, they have communicated it well, Within the three of them, they know exactly what their job is and what the end goal is, and everything is going very smoothly. It's taking a little bit of time because we're trying not to make mistakes because a mistake with a chainsaw is usually a body part or a finger or something. So we're almost done. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. What do you see? Giant TJIs that won't cut. Uh, this blade is just getting super hot and going through nails. Yeah. Okay, even though we were being as safe as possible, that was a little nerve-wracking to watch. I'm so glad everyone has all their fingers and toes still. So there's so much sawdust up here now that like the Starlink is the only thing keeping Grayson and I from sliding off this thing like we're at a jungle gym. Uh, Grayson's been holding onto my belt pretty much the entire time I was cutting so that I didn't start sliding. But uh, now it's proving to be a little difficult for us to get down without just having to take the easy way. Hold the ladder steady. Great success. Didn't even have to cut into the envelope. I know. You did so perfectly. I did right there though. That's okay. Good job. I know what you're thinking. That's not the intended purpose of a chainsaw, but it got the job done and everyone is safe and sound back on the ground. And uh, we needed to do that. Surgery part one, accomplished. I don't want to have to do that again. <laughs> What are you doing, Mr. Frank? Oh, we got to control yourself. Oh, and to tell you about the exciting news at our house. <gasps> Jason is pregnant. Mom. No! Like, hugely Mom. pregnant. Really? And so, last night Ben's like, Mom, I think she's like bloated. And I look down and like, <gasps> And I'm like, how did we not see this? How did really? we not know? She never showed, showed signs of heat. She wasn't even supposed to go into heat till October. Wow. And so, what breed is she? She's a border collie. Okay. And the neighbor across the street that is not that is a that is a male. He is a red healer. Oh my gosh! So, You're so killing me. So like good farm dogs. But I was like, all oh. like, no. I'm like, how did this happen? And she's like huge and ready to burst. So I gotta really? call the vet today and see because I if she's like. It must have happened we like the first week we were there wow. because we didn't have we were like so busy moving and unpacking and everything and she got out a couple times. One of times. her adventures, yeah. One of those couple times she got out and then after that we're like we got her in the yard and she didn't get out and now she's hugely pregnant. Oh my gosh! Puppy's coming soon. So I You should tell Trent. I tell Oh my Trent. gosh. Gypsy is pregnant, like hugely pregnant. No. And she never even went into heat that I saw. So it must have happened the first week we were here. The, the neighbor dog and oh. we never saw them like the healer. Yes. Hank. Yes. Is his name Hank? Roy. Roy. <laughs> <laughs> and so so 
the white I cake. want one of them. I know. Oh my gosh. That's what we're doing. Me too. <laughs> and then last night he's like petting her and he's like, mom, I think she's like bloated. And I look down and I'm like, how did this happen? Like I was freaking out because I didn't see it. A border collie and a healer is going to be such a good mix. Yeah, I That's know, awesome. They're going to be cute. I know. <laughs> What is that? Rock. Rock. Hey, let's go find the stroller. Well, that's pretty exciting news to wake up to. Uh, we do not need another dog. We especially do not need another puppy, but um, check in in a few weeks and we'll see where we're at. I know Trent would always love another animal. Today's a little bit of a complicated day. It seems like no matter what it is, whenever we have a delivery, if there's another delivery happening in the next like six months, they're both gonna happen on the same day. That's just the way that it always happens. We ordered our lumber kit and they were gonna deliver it today. We're on the schedule, so they're gonna be here at some point today. Also, uh, Hone is coming to drop off our propane tank, our second propane tank today. And my guess is they'll probably show up within about 10 minutes of each other, but I'd rather have them both come today than them both be postponed or not show up, so. We're trying to get everything ready, um, trying to move stuff around so that we have places to put the lumber. And then as soon as the uh, propane guys show up, I need to get the excavator and I need to go over there so that I can actually help set the tank. Is today also another surgery day? I don't want to. <laughs> it's probably needs to be on the agenda. Oh, go get him. There's really only so much we can do right now, um, just based on the time we have left and the priorities of the things that need to happen before it snows. So we're kind of planning excavation and backfilling and grading in stages. And the first stage is just everything that needs to happen before this winter. But we are not gonna finish everything, like finish all of the retaining walls this fall. A lot of that is gonna be accomplished in the spring once things melt, because as the snow melts, inevitably the ground will settle and the earth will move a little bit. So we know even if we retain everything right now, things will change between now and the spring after this first snowfall. So we're gonna do a little bit now, do a lot now, let it all kind of settle, melt, and then figure out what needs to be finessed and touched up before we actually retain everything permanently. In the meantime, our priority is to get snow melt drainage routes dug in and trenched um, as, as best as possible so that the snow at least has somewhere to go. This looks super flat and nice and graded out. You can kind of see the beginning stages of a patio and like a little hangout zone out here. This is gonna be really nice. It turned out pretty good. Um, one of the problems that we're gonna have, <clears throat> or one of the side effects of this addition or extension, is that when the snow comes off the roof, where it piled up on the back of our house, instead of piling up behind the house, it's gonna land on this roof, and then it's gonna shed this direction. So this area right here will have incredibly large amounts of snow, so I have to be able to get the skid steer with the snow blower up this little road and back here so that I can blow that snow other places so that it doesn't build up and just completely encase this whole side of the house. Mm -hmm. Then in the springtime, when the snow that's out here starts to melt, 
It needs to be graded away from the building and then needs to be graded down this road so that it can head out to the street. It's hmm. not the easiest thing to do, but I think this will work. How are you? Good, I'm Allie. Corey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming up today. Uh -huh. Appreciate it. Put guidelines on it and kind of navigate it while you're holding it. Uh, no, I think they can just put their hands on the okay. outsides of it and kind of help manipulate it. The original guy line. The original guy line, just a guy. <laughs> Get the really big brown and orange carabiner out of the climbing bag. Okay. Whole life rests on that carabiner. Yeah, so let's see. This here is for rock climbing, <laughs> but it is rated for seven kilonewtons. I don't know what that means. That doesn't sound like a lot to me. <laughs> Way better. Yeah. Way better. This is what it's for. Yeah. <laughs> Feel good? Oh boy. All right, here we go. We'll get there tomorrow. Closer. Yeah, how's spacing? Are we okay? Um, I mean, it's up to you guys. You're three feet on here. That's... You're a little further on this end. It's up to you. As long as you're three feet, we're good. You okay. Can go any direction after that. Okay. I'm so excited for us to double the amount of propane that we have. We're going to continue for sure to ration and conserve as much as possible. But just that peace of mind of knowing that we have some reserves in case we need it is going to be huge throughout this winter, especially if it's the type of winter that they are predicting. So hopefully just a few more minutes of setting this thing in place and we'll be done. You're a good girl. Are you helping? Lika, no biting, good girl. You're a good helper, huh? Do you want another puppy? Do you want another puppy? Do you want a puppy friend? Maybe that's what you need. You guys have heard me talk before about Lika being our wild child. She's the spicy one out of the group. And maybe what she needs is a puppy companion. I don't know. The reason we got Lika in the first place is because we thought Frank needed a puppy companion. Um, and we just like had puppy fever for some reason. I think it was actually baby fever, uh, but we channeled it into puppy fever and it ended up working out perfectly or imperfectly, you decide, with the timing of my pregnancy with Leo. So 
Needless to say, she did not get enough attention during that first crucial puppy year because I was exhausted and pregnant and Trent was trying to finish this house so that we could move into the house before I gave birth. Um, we have since put in a lot more effort into training and working with Lika, but we're kind of feeling that same, those same feels all over again. Should we get another puppy? I don't know. Maybe that's just baby fever talking and we should not channel it into puppy fever. <laughs> what do you guys think? Mr. Leo, what are you doing? Who is that? <gasps> a truck. Is that a truck? Where's Dada? Daddy. Where? Daddy. Go get him. Go get him. <gasps> Big hug for oh, Dada. Yes. Oh, is that the skid steer? <laughs> is that the excavator? It goes like this. Excavator, <laughs> excavator. Well, that is super exciting. We got our second propane tank completely set up and installed and secured in place. We're going to have it filled, I think, tomorrow or the next day. A truck is going to come up and fill it all the way. So we'll be fully set up for winter. And in the meantime, now we are waiting for our lumber delivery for the second story of our addition. They gave us a three hour window. So we have no idea when they are actually going to show up. So in the meantime, we're back to backfilling. Well guys, we actually ended up getting a phone call from BMC right after we got done backfilling all of those pylons <laughs> and they basically said, we ain't coming. No, no, no. We've got everything loaded up on a truck, but it's too late in the day. Yeah. We're not coming. So even though they told us that they were going to be there between one and five, they're actually coming tomorrow. Yeah, which is totally fine. It's just a one day delay. Not a big deal. I'm happy with it. <laughs> anyway, so they're going to be delivering the lumber kit tomorrow. Then we're going to be able to start framing the second story. I am super, super psyched for that. And, uh, and there's more surgery involved. We had surgery today. Uh, and we're gonna have more surgery. I, don't know if I would call that surgery. It's more of a hack job, but <laughs> we used the chainsaw, which I must say, for the record, was my idea. So I'm, I'm excited that we did it's it that not way. Your idea. <laughs> it wasn't my idea. <laughs> not your idea. <laughs> I'm excited <sighs> that it all worked out. I will say that. You're cute. Thanks. <laughs> Anyway, I think this is where we're going to let you guys go. If you guys enjoyed coming along on today's adventure, make sure you show us by yeah. giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you, guys. We love you. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. I don't want to stay here, no. Ain't going to keep it low now. If you want to go, let's go. Let's wrap it up and hit the road. I just got an awesome vibe. Striking the wind of hopes now. Liberty's on my mind. Stay